gaze across the parking lot at the 2015 Aprilia Capo Nord and it will likely trigger fantastic dreams of pulling up to a bar in Morocco for a taste of mint tea after a long slog across nearly impassable roads and seemingly endless expanses of nothingness. That's the point of adventure bikes and that out there styling. And like with many adventure machines, it's just a bit of a fib. But don't hold it against the Capo Nord or any of its other not so dirt ready brothers. They've stepped in as the new versions of lighter weight sport tourers, only with standard bike ergonomics and typically longer travel suspension. They are a blessing for motorcycle travelers. The market is foul with such machines. We've been riding overtime just to get them all stuffed in the pages of CW. You probably read about the new Suzuki V-Strom 1000 ABS in our exclusive first test last month, and saw that it fared pretty well against its more expensive European competition the BMW R1200GS and KTM 1190 Adventure, although the latter proved the class of the field in that showdown. Enter the $15,499 Capo Nord, which fits between the budget-conscious Suzuki and those other top-line Euro machines. Ergonomics are beautifully composed, with a wide, leverage-friendly handlebar and an exceptionally comfortable seat that reminded us of the 2001-04 Aprilia Futura Sport Tourer's nearly perfect perch. Said an Aprilia factory insider, our testers have the finest buds capable of identifying the best compromise between style and comfort. Okay, he was being a little tongue-in-cheek, but we're serious. The Capo Nord is a great place to sit. And a great bike to ride. While the RSV4 in spread front end styling suggests the Capo Nord might be a V4, the bike is actually a cousin to the Dorso Duro 1200 V twin right down to some of the frame elements. This revamped 1197 cubic centimeters engine features a 90 degree V, with a mixed gear and chain drive for its four cams to keep the heads more compact. The 52mm throttle bodies are downsized from the 57s used on the big Dorso Duro, and overall power character is tuned to emphasize broad torque. Output on the CW Dino Jet Dino was 106 horsepower and 74 pound feet of torque. The story here, though, is that more than 60 pound feet is available below 3000 rpm. Combine this with an absolutely excellent clutch slash six speed gearbox and leaving the line is a pure pleasure, either gliding away at part throttle or launching hard. It pulls as smooth and creamy as the finest espresso with a full bodied kick that leaves you cheerful for hours. Get on the gas hard and one or more of the Caponord's many rider aid systems may intervene. This fully loaded travel pack bike, the only version coming to the US, is a rolling showcase for better living through electronics, ride-by-wire throttle modes, ABS, traction control, semi-active electronic suspension, cruise control, and more. Nice thing about the throttle modes is that all three are actually useful. The Caponord's Sport, Touring, and Rain modes carry typical names, but with many bikes they could often be called crap, stutter, and adequate. Not here. Sport does border on abrupt, but it generally delivers dynamic, fun engine response. Touring is the best all-around mode, gentle, yet firm, and rain actually is useful in wet conditions, offering smooth, traction-friendly initial response and max output limited to 100 claimed horsepower, 25 down on the factory stated peak. Aprilia traction control is the same as that used on the RSV4 but without the launch control and anti-wheelie programs. It was surprisingly active in its intervention even on setting 1, the sportiest of the three. And without actual wheelie control, ATC cuts output very hard when the front end pops up, since the system interprets the wheel speed differential as rear spin. Turn it off if you want to wheelie. I was happy to have setting 2 in some very poor conditions, which Aprilia says is for normal use. Setting 3 caused the I'm working, yellow light to flash when actual wheel spin didn't seem possible. 2 channel continental ABS works with the Brembo mono block front calipers and the single piston rear to provide great braking performance. And, like with ATC, ABS can be turned off independently of the other systems. The best is last 
Aprilia Dynamic Damping. One ride and you won't think its ad name is funny. As with systems available from Ducati and BMW, there are manual settings available for various loads, but the Aprilia's automatic setting is the way to go and what differentiates it from the competition. In this mode, damping and rear preload are altered on the fly. Via a dedicated ECU, suspension position, and its rate of position change are constantly measured. Those values are combined with front and rear wheel speeds, twist grip position, and front brake application information to set the damping curves for the SAX suspension units front and rear. Aprilia has four patents on this semi-active system, which uses proprietary software. Why semi-active? Because it doesn't rapidly alter front and rear spring preload based on immediate road conditions and how you are riding the bike. The suspension delivered superb ride comfort on the freeway and the chassis maintained very good composure when I hit the twisties, said road test editor Don Cannett. The Capo Nord is very stable and slightly heavy in steering feel, although the wide bars reduce effort to a nice degree. I like the steadfast, flowing feeling when cornering. And, in automatic setting, the bike maintains this feeling whether you throw on a passenger or load the reasonably sized color matched hard bags. Strangely, although the Capo Nord has standard cruise control, it did not function on the particular bike we tested. Also, our 1200 wasn't fitted with optional heated grips, which meant that the button on the right handlebar control pod did nothing but remind us of how toasty our hands could have been. On a more positive note, Wind protection on the Capo Nord is good, courtesy of that big front end and adjustable windscreen, same mechanism as used on the Goodsy Stelvio. Screen up or down, the level of wind blast at helmet level is about the same, noisy but not turbulent. Standard handguards are a nice touch in foul weather. If you hit some really bad stuff, be glad the Capo Nord has a 690 watt alternator which means you can run your heated vest, your GPS, or most other typical electrical accessories with no worries. Get the Triumph Tiger Explorer XC with its 950 watt setup if you think you'll need a microwave or to do any trailside welding. If you're thinking about the Darien Gap or even a muddy trail, consider the standard tires, 17-inch Dunlop Qualifier IIS, about as sporty asphalt as you can get. Yes. The Capo Nord is much more like the Ducati Multistrada 1200 than either the BMW or KTM Adventure bike offerings. It's a sporty road-going machine that can wander down a well-groomed dirt road without too much trouble. You may not end up in Morocco for mint tea on a Capo Nord, but you probably wanted a good espresso, which you can really only get in better paved parts of the world anyway.